Yeah, so um, June 18th, the library just closed. And it's a little bit after 6 o'clock. Like I said, my shit still need to be shaved, so I'm not going to show my face. Basically, I started off where I left off at yesterday in the book, The Vindicated. Uh, vindicated by Korean Stephan, so this is part three. Uh, <coughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess it's some type type of revised copy because I looked up on the internet. You know, a hard copy is supposed to have 226 pages. This one got like 209 or 07, one of them. But uh, anyway, yeah. Stopped off talking about the whole the hotel situation with Lil Wayne. So this picked up on that. And she... Uh, like I said, she went home, but then she sent Lil Wayne a text message. And because, you know, he felt like his territory was somewhat intruded upon by Bow Wow, he responded to it. So they had a little back and forth, and he asked her to, you know, to come up to the hotel where he was at and come up to his bus and see him. So she decided to do that. She said, give me about 20 minutes. So uh, she drove up there to the bus where he was at, and when she pulled up, she said somebody else, she had seen a guy come out. No, no, actually, when she pulled up, she made it her intention to go see Bow Wow first. Now, before I go on, I'm thinking to myself as I'm reading this portion, I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a little game. She already kind of like got Lil Wayne on edge since she knows she got to his ego. And more than likely, this is what I'm thinking at the point. By the time she goes speak to Lil Wayne, of course, he's going to uh, ask about Bow Wow. And if she goes see Bow Wow first, that's also going to work uh, to her advantage, but also against Lil Wayne. So that's exactly what she did. She, she went to go see Bow Wow, spoke to him for a little second or whatever. She let him know what she had planned and what she was going to do. He was cool with that. When she finally left Bow Wow, that's when she went to go see Lil Wayne. She went on the bus and she said like they embraced and everything and you know she felt on this little bullet bar I mean bullet scar that he had on his back before he got a record deal when he got shot when he was younger. So they got to talking or whatever, but then she played like this emotional role. Cause in the midst of them talking or whatever, saying they miss each other's she was like, you know what? I can't do this. He was like, What you mean? She was like, I can't do this anymore. And so she decided to break away from Lil Wayne. Now like I say, I'm looking at that like, okay, that 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 seemed like a power move, because uh, based on what I do know about Korean Stephens, especially past interviews and what she wrote about in this book, as far as like her and Bow Wow, and you know the way she presented herself to him when she first got to actually kick it with him, you know she liked to play that little dominant role at the same time. So I feel like that was just like one of those moves to where it's like, okay, me and you stop talking for a second. Even if it's permanent, I want to be the one that leave out on top. You know what I'm saying? So that's what happened. So she told him she don't want to, you know, continue with this no more. It doesn't make sense or whatever. And then she broke away from the Wayne. Then she went back home. Now the thing is, by, uh, and like I said, I always say if I'm forgetting something, I'll go back to it by early 2009 all right she still was continuing her relationship with bow wow but this is like really barely this is like but this happened around january the second what i'm about to point out but by that time she was saying like you know based on her relationship with bow wow she basically ended up in the same position that reese was in she said, Bow Wow, well, you know, like their conversations at first, they'll be talking for hours through uh, video messages and text messages, stuff like that. But then all of a sudden, you know, those hours kind of decreased gradually to the point where he would not always respond back to her and answer her text messages. So he became a little dismissive at the same time. So the reason why I point out Reese is because that's the same thing that happened with her. As she mentioned earlier on in the book, when she was saying like, Reese was telling her that after her and Bow Wow's little sexual escapades or whatever, then he kind of became dismissive. So I'm seeing the same parallel here. I'm seeing the same thing play out here. So that's what happened with her and Bow Wow. So that more than likely is also at the end of 2008. So by the time January the 2nd comes and uh, 
she said like she was you know basically treating herself she had gained a little bit more weight etc so she was she went to a dunkin donuts or something like that and she went there she ordered her little donuts or whatever and then she left it was somewhere on the hill you know that's what she said some type of area on the hill so she left she went back to the crib as she got to the crib and she got done eating and all of that when she unwind somebody was at her door and she was kind of like puzzled by it because she felt like what she said when she got back home she made sure she locked her gate and all of that so you know she going through the possibilities of her mind to assure herself that that was the case that she locked her gate and if she did if somebody jump over it, blah 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 she go get up and I forget the name of the dog that she had with her, but she said it was a pit bull. So she walks back toward the door and come to find out it was the guy, Aaron, the dude that had put a, uh, a, a order of protection against her much prior to this. So he was at the door. She looked. She was like, OK, hold on for a second. She went back in the room. She grabbed a little outfit that she had on prior to this, which was like a, a, a white sweatsuit out outfit. <laughs> she put that shit back on and she answered the door for him so they got to talking blah 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 make a long story short as far as this part because a lot happened after this uh you know he was you know whispering sweet shit in her ear basically telling her everything she wanted to hear like oh i'm sorry you know i want us to get back together i want to have a family and i want to get married the married part is definitely a contradiction because of what happened later on which i will point out but that's what he was telling her right so, you know, she kind of falling for it, but at the same time, you know, based on what she was writing, what she was saying in the book, you know, it was, <clears throat> it, it was, it was, you know, that, 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 that normalness, you know what I'm saying, that little void still there. So she was kind of like falling for what he was saying, but, you know, she thought like the time, it was also an interesting, point. you know, she felt like she was basically just getting herself back together from an emotional standpoint and she pointed out how like it feels as if every time she get in such a space like that something happens to where you know I guess like a person in her life would draw her back toward them you know what I'm saying and so she felt like in this particular instance it was Aaron whispering all this good shit in her ear in which she was falling for so so this is like a January, all right? So uh, they started back talking, and uh, she had a conversation with Bow Wow. Now, remember still, her and Bow Wow was kind of like, a, well, really on the side of Bow Wow. He wasn't really fucking with her too much. So this is also another note that I made to myself in my head that I thought it was interesting. So she had to call Bow Wow and let Bow Wow know that she was back with this guy Aaron. But the funny thing is, when she had this conversation with Bow Wow, which I personally think is, you know, out of line, but you know, I guess people sometimes a person want to just uh, make themselves feel better, I guess. When she had this conversation with Bow Wow, she had him on speakerphone, and she had the guy Aaron standing right next to uh, her talking, listening to everything that Bow Wow was saying. So, you know, Bow Wow was like, why would you want to go back with this guy? This and that. And she's like, well, I can't really deal. I can't remember the words verbatim, but basically she was letting him know that she had to cut off the, she had to curtail the whole relationship because everything was kind of like rectified between her and Aaron. Again, Aaron standing right there. He had a little smirk on his face. It's a little manly thing. I ain't mad at that, but still, I'm like, damn, it, goes, it is kind of grimy for you to have this motherfucker stand. I'm, you know, I'm putting myself in a position like that to piss me the fuck off, boy. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking to somebody the whole time and, you know, I'm thinking it's just me and you talking. So I'm going to be a little bit more, uh, I'm going to be a little bit more open as far as like the circumference of myself and those aspects or facets that I may allow you to see because I'm not feeling like I'm being viewed. But you got this other motherfucker on the opposite, like standing right next to you live listening to everything I'm saying. He may be perceiving some of the shit that I say is me kicking it. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of like dissing me. That's why I felt like, you know, she was kind of stunting with doing that. Anyway, so he had a little smirk or whatever. So she got that whole situation settled. 
And as she goes along in the book, hold on, let me show her everything. See, I ain't got no papers. You know what I'm saying? Just reflecting on what the fuck I read. Only thing I got in my hand is a dollar and some cigarettes. Uh, anyway, so, oh yeah, yeah, so, 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 she said that he stayed there with her pretty much, right? And as far as like the marriage thing, you know, she could, she, she, she kept that at the forefront of her mind because that was something that she really wanted at the same time, even though, you know, some, uh, unconsciously speaking, she knew it wouldn't be the most practical move to make. In other words, she kind of knew, like, you know, that was a significant percentage of bullshit and what Aaron was saying to her. But from an emotional standpoint, she was drawing toward his words anyway because that's what she really hoped for deep down inside as well you know the, on the flip side of uh, flip side of the coin so uh yeah so he he moved in well this, this, this is this is kind of like a contradiction at this point she says he moved in and he stayed there for like up until february but then she goes on in the book and she was like well you know i as far as like the marriage thing she, she was saying she kept that at the forefront of her mind and didn't let it just like uh, uh, fade away as far as between the both of them for like three months. But that would mean, that's what, March, April, May. That means, you know, they would have gotten married in May. Turns out she got married in March and it was March the 23rd, right? This is still 2000 and fucking, um, this is 2009. So March 23rd, she got married. <coughs> and, uh, oh yeah, let me make a note real quick. The very first fucking um, book report blog that I did, you know, like I said, I remember when she claimed they adopted the baby, which was supposed to have been like a little bit more than a year after they were together. Now it's making sense. Because when I thought about it, I was like, damn, that is good. Based on everything else, else that happened so far, you know, it's kind of like, you know, that would be in, um, what, 2000? Anyway, I ain't, ain't going to get lost in that. So, they ended up getting married in March. March the 23rd. Now, uh, she was saying, like, based on her knowledge, that when you, in California, also, when you want to get married, you could do that instantly inside of a chapel. And it, it's not really that much money. It's not that expensive. You like under three hundred dollars she said and um she pointed out something later on about the aspect but as far as like marriage is concerned you know it, it, it's easy to do that and it's almost like a, like a, a marriage license is damn near readily available from a relative standpoint so they got married that day march 23rd and this part she pointed out later but i'm gonna go ahead and mention it ahead of time anyway you know, that very day, right before they got married, they had a pastor inside their home. And, you know, Aaron had a little conversation to where he got a little uh, aggressive, especially being that the pastor was agreeing with a lot of stuff that Corinne was talking about. But again, that goes back to his personality traits as far as like what she said about him when she first met him, how he'll be kind of like loud and flashy. So, you know, I can kind of see that happening. but that very day this is where when i say that's a contradiction as far as like when he first told her in uh january january the second how he wanted the family and get married to her this is where the contradiction unfolds that very fucking day right can they get married when they're leaving and they're on the road how you doing when they're leaving and they're on the road you know, she felt the little funny vibe. And he had kind of like an attitude. So she was kind of like trying to find out what's wrong with him. He was like, nothing wrong. You know, you married, you happy, or whatever. He was being real curt. And eventually, when they got back to the crib, uh, let me see. I want to make sure I'm not, you know what I'm saying? When they got back to the crib, they got into an argument. And he got real scolding. You know, he was like, you know, I can't, I don't like Mary. In other words, his real, true, sincere 
feelings came out. He was like, I can't stand the, the idea of marriage. What is it? Nothing but a piece of paper. And then when you get married to a person, you know, you don't have sex as much. And then he referenced uh, what he experienced as a young person as far as when his dad and his mama got married, blah, blah, blah. And so she fell in a certain way. And then he just started, man, he started dissing her ass. And he was hurting the feelings. And she said she got up and, you know, just part out. And the, the, you know, the way that she wrote it, the way that she wrote it and described it, I'm thinking she's saying, like, you know, the guy Aaron got up and walked toward her bed. But she actually got up and put herself in a certain position to where, you know, she was crouched down, but her head was buried in her knees, you know, like a sorrow like position. And then in the midst of him arguing with her, right? Because she wasn't really saying too much. He was doing a lot of the talking. But in the midst of him arguing with her, this motherfucker turned up for real. He walked up toward her, and she said he spit dead in her face. And when he spit in her face, she spit right back at him. And, you know, they got into the fight. I was like, wow. So, let me see. After that, uh, they still were together. But, you know, his, 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 his behavior patterns, like I said, as far as the realness coming out, you know, it wasn't uh, consistent. She said they'll get into a whole bunch of arguments and then he'll make little threats like, you know, I want to get, I want a divorce or whatever. But he wouldn't immediately follow through on that. And of course, you know, in the midst of them arguing back and forth, she'll say something like, yeah, fine. You know, that's, that's fine. You can get a divorce. Uh, he started leaving. He wouldn't... Um, he wouldn't stay as much as uh, he wouldn't stay there and let me see see there's other stuff that i'm thinking about in my head this happened later but i'm trying to put this in chronological order as far as like the reality of what she said basically like uh later on around may she had moved in into another home <coughs> and i'm gonna make a note of this also before i go along i gotta make a note she had moved into another home in may and she was saying, like, the whole time that she had been with him, of course, you know, uh, it's re reiterations, that he hasn't really, well, he did not really help out as far as, like, uh, you know, rent and stuff like that. And she was saying, like, from 2000, because she had the crib since 2006, and she'd been with him since 2007. So, so from 07 to 09, she paid about... 20,000, a little bit over 20,000 in total for, you know, uh, rent and, and expenses, which I thought was fucking weird because she, she had also pointed out around 2008 when Obama got elected and you had the whole little economy situation that happened, but you know, in particular, the real estate crash. Now me, myself, I don't know that much about real estate. I know enough, but she was saying like around that time, before that, she'll pay like uh, six thousand uh, dollars for mortgage, mortgage on a monthly basis. But then a little bit after that, it it went up to ten thousand. So I'm like, in my head, you know, as I'm reading this, and like I say, this is just this is based on her words. I'm like, if you paying six thousand a month for mortgage, okay, that would make sense because your home is worth over a million. But within like a two years span or really three years actually three years 2006 to 2009 only the 07 to 09 as far as that that basically just includes Aaron into the picture but overall from 06 to 09 if you paying like fucking 6,000 and then eventually the shit went up to 10,000 how is you only how is it that you only pay a little bit over 20,000 in mortgage and other expenses that shit would have been way more than twenty thousand because even if her shit didn't go up to ten thousand, let's just say six thousand. What is six times twelve? Seventy-two, right? So that would be seventy-two thousand fucking dollars in a year. That's only one year. If you've been there three years, how is it that you only paid a little bit over twenty thousand dollars? That doesn't make sense. But anyway, that's what she said. And like I say, in May she moved, and the guy Aaron, you know. This time he pitched in a little bit. Now, as far as like, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, yeah, 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 yeah. 
if I'm not, hopefully I'm not getting that 20,000 wrong. She did also say she paid 20,000 for like mo uh, uh, moving expenses and shit into the new home. But I, I, if, if, if I could recall correctly, I think she did say she paid 20,000, over 20,000 in mortgage and other expenses during the whole time in her first initial million dollar home. But when she ended up moving, she still paid over 20,000 in moving fees. Now, as far as like that aspect, she said that guy Aaron helped. He paid about, uh, no, 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 no. Moving fees is 15,000, about 15,000. But he did, you know, pitch in on that. He paid 10%. She said he had like 1,500 that he attributed or contributed, not attributed, but contributed. So he helped out in that aspect. That was like the biggest uh, help that he provided from that point. But <laughs> he was still kind of lazy as far as like, you know, he like actually physically helping her move everything. So a little bit after that, uh, she wrote in the book, she was like, you know, as far as like her ordeal and what she was going through with him, she wrote some diaries about it. And she had like a few of them. She had like four different ent entries that, you know, she uh, paced within a book. The first one was on uh, June the 25th. June the 25th, and let me see if I can remember, I think she said, uh, yeah, she was basically talking about, like, what, what was going on amongst the relationship, uh, again, reiterations as far as him not being there all the time, him acting funny, but, like, the baby, really Jonah, because her son, her son would have been, uh, he was born in 98, so he would have been about about 11 yeah about 11 years old around this time so it had to be jonah because jonah was born in 2007 so she'll be about you know, you know almost almost two years old so she was saying like you know jonah would sleep with them and a lot of times aaron would get up as well and he'll leave and it'd be like at 9 p.m another time she said 1 a.m and she said 4 a.m. Now this is all within this one particular diary entry, June 25th. So then she goes on and she put another entry in there, which was uh, June the 26th. And she basically highlighted uh, a little a little argument that they had where he made a little comment. Like he came in. This is like around 12:15 a.m. when she wrote this in this diary. So. You know, I wasn't really 100% sure exactly when this particular argument or comment was made that I'm about to point out. But, you know, he came in one time and she's like, you know, where you been? Woo woo. And he said, <laughs> he said, this ain't make no fucking sense. He was like, Michael Jackson died, bitch. Or some shit. Michael Jackson died, bitch. Leave me alone or some shit like that. Then another one was uh, July the 2nd. And she was basically just talking about, like, uh, where, whether he would be with them on July 4th or something like that. But then the last entry was on July the 11th. And she reflected and she said, actually, what happened was on July 4th, he did come and stay with them, spend the whole night with them. And then even the next day, he, he stayed there as well. Left for a second, but left his uh, daughter, I mean, son, Jonah, <laughs> with her son Naeem went away for a little bit but then came back and spent the night as well that's what she highlighted so then after that let me see uh, there was a job that he ended up getting right for like a soap opera or something like that basically like some acting position and so she was saying like she helped him out with practices and all that type of stuff and uh, they got into an argument I'm trying to remember where this place was supposed to have been situated or located at Malibu. Yeah, Malibu in California. That's where it, his job would be at. So before it was uh, finalized that he got the position for the role, you know, they got into an argument. He had called her one time and he was like, you know, I want a divorce. And then she was baffled by that. She was like, what? <laughs> because she went into detail as far as the process of at this point 
she was saying like, in, you know, it would be pretty much a, a quick process and it would be nothing that you could do about it because the the agreement was a, um, a what, what was it, nuptial, nuptial, you know what I'm saying? So basically, if he divorced her, he wouldn't really take her money. I'm thinking like a prenup was the opposite of that. Like if you sign a prenup with somebody, I guess, you know, that would mean that you get like half or a certain percentage of what your significant other has if y'all end up getting divorced. And then a, a nuptial agreement is just the opposite. And you just leave with what you came into the marriage with, I guess. <laughs> you don't really share anything. And, and this is right here is an assumption on my part. Unless within the marriage, you know, y'all have, y'all share something. So I guess like some type of additional fight will happen over that. But for the most part, you know, you leave with what you came with. That's what I'm thinking so far. But he called and said he wanted the divorce. And she was saying like uh, it wouldn't take much longer once a person files the papers. And it would be nothing that the person who may not want a divorce can do about it unless the person who, who, who makes the effort for a divorce you know, backtracks or rec not even recoil, but you know, basically just changes their mind. That's what she was saying. So she was kind of worried about that. Now, uh, after that, right, comes November. And she was saying, like, in the beginning of November. Yeah, actually, yeah, because he, he made this call during the first week of November. But still, she found out that uh, he had got the role or whatever. And she was doing her little research on the internet. That's how she found out. And it was a guy named uh, John Murray. Interesting first name, J-A-W-N. And then Murray, or Murray. And the guy had wrote an article talking about this, or mentioning it. And so she found out he got the role. And again, she got pissed off because she started you know, putting everything together. Like, wait a minute. Okay, this is the reason why he wants a divorce. It makes sense. And she was saying in the book, Oh, I thought my phone cut off. It's just the power finna die. So I got to hurry up. She was saying in the book, uh, she was like, okay, I helped this motherfucker out. He didn't really provide too much as far as on my end helping me out. So now it makes sense that he wants this divorce because now he don't really need me as, as much now. And so she, uh, I think she ended up getting in contact with him. And of course he denied that that was the case. He told her. He couldn't tell nobody or whatever. But then a little bit after that, now this is where I get to, because I stopped a little bit after this because the library was closing. But she was like, um, come to find out, he did get the role, but he was not going to be paid that much. And plus, like, the fees that he have, have to pay for, like, his uh, management team and agency would kind of, like, take away from his pockets. Still, he'll have more money coming in than what he had throughout their whole relationship since 2007. But, it, you know, compared to her income or what she was worth, it still wouldn't be that fucking much money. So then, let me see. Uh, I think they got back together. Or he changed his mind on the whole divorce thing. And that's basically, that's basically where I stopped at. At this moment, as far as, like, what I can recall. But I am going to point out something else, though. I'm like, okay. Korean stuff and this is the personality thing okay the dominant factor yeah I do think she plays to that and I do think she likes to be dominant but you know I'm trying to like mathematically subtract that shit from her need though from like you know a normal family and then also what came with that you know like okay let's take uh, Lil Wayne what is it about Lil Wayne that she really likes that uh, she draws to but at the same time this guy Aaron who has been doing her dirty now the dominant factor I guess would be like the money aspect he needs her more than what she needs him damn yeah 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 he needs her more than she needs him so even though she may complain about this being that she dealt with that for like fucking two years you know what I'm saying obviously that kind of reflects the dominant aspect of her personality as well. Now, going back to Bow Wow. Bow Wow. Again, based on Reese, what Reese had explained to her, 
and also her dealings with Bow Wow herself and, you know, what she observed about him and how she felt like he was not that experienced in bed and how he liked to chill and basically play video games like any other regular person, but, you know, in particular, a younger person would. And how, uh, she, well, so far, so far, how, like, in the book, you know, as far as, like, around January the 2nd, around that time, how Bow Wow wasn't really you know, responding to her messages as much, how he was acting kind of like dismissive of her. You know, she really didn't seem to be a, too affected by that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, how does that play into the dominant aspect? Okay, the dominant aspect is, I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm going to leave that alone until I go a little further in the book. Shit got a little dilapidated. But yeah, that's it. That's where I'm at so far. So uh, yeah, tomorrow, like I say, I'll finish that. It's going to be part three. And again, ain't no fucking notes. I don't do no fucking notes. And I continue reading. I forget. What page am I on? I forget. I think I'm on 70 something. But yeah, that's everything. And let me make sure I didn't leave out anything else that I think is important. Because it was something else that I wanted to say about that dominant aspect. But I got enough information through anyway. Yeah. All right. I'll holler at y'all tomorrow. Like I say, this is kind of miscellaneous. You know, it's like a sidetrack study. I don't even want to say study, but sidetrack activity aside from my primary study, which is that book that was compiled during the fucking eighth century that I'm far along in. So this is just like a extracurriculum type shit. But I holla at y'all. So I'm finna go get me something to drink.